So we're going to look at problem 2-65. And if I remember correctly, in that problem is a 3D problem where we have the x-axis, your y-axis, and your z-axis. And we have two force vectors. And each force vector is represented in a different way. So the first force vector, um, I guess I'm, yeah, the first force vector, which we're going to call, I guess it's F2 has a magnitude of 500 newtons. And that force vector is given to us in uh, these Cartesian angles, which is basically an angle from each axis. So this is a 60 degrees from the x-axis. This is 45 degrees from the y-axis. And then we are given 120 degrees from the z-axis. Um, I like using these angles because it's very easy to figure out their components. But anyway, there's a second vector. And in the figure in the book, you're going to see the two vectors in the same drawing. But I don't want to mix up my drawing because I'm not very good at drawing these things. So I'm just going to draw the second vector on the side. And this is my vector F1, which has a magnitude of 300 newtons. Right, and this vector is not given to us in these Cartesian angles. Instead, we are told that we have a 60 degree angle between the vector and the xy plane. And then we are told we have a 45 degree angle between the xy, the, the, x -axis, the y axis, and the projection of the vector on the xy plane. So I'm going to try to draw it here. We're going to have a 45 degree angle. And then we're going to have a 60 degree angle. So this one's a little bit harder to grasp, particularly if you're looking at it um, for the first time. The book does a good job at this. It shades the different projections with different colors. But we have essentially two vectors expressed in two completely different ways. Now, if you are trying to understand these there is a section on the book that talks about the different types of angles and i don't have the book with me right now so i can't pick up that section but i'll figure it out and post it on d2l but essentially you have two vectors and the problem asks us to express our forces in cartesian ver vector form and then to find the resultant force right so we'll look at those problems and figure out how we can express them in Cartesian notation form. So the easiest vector to represent Cartesian notation is this one, the one that uses our coordinate angle, our Cartesian angles. Typically these angles, if it's from the x-axis, I think we call them alpha. If it's from the y-axis, we call this angle beta. And if it's from the z-axis, we call it gamma. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Right? I'm just trying, I'm just speaking from memory here, but I think that's how we call them. So I'm assuming that, uh, Jason, were, when you were talking about the different directions, you were referring more to this vector. So I think this vector should be a little bit easy, right? So if we want the x, the y, and the z components of this vector, how would we get the x component? And it can be Jason or it can be anyone else. Like how, how would we get the x component? If we're talking about the left one, then mm -hmm. for the x, compo x component, all you would have to do is just do uh, the 500 times um, cosine of 50, 60 degrees. Thank you, Ray. So for the x component, we have 500 times cosine of 60 degrees. And that's true, because if you were to try to look at this projection, what we have is a triangle, a right triangle with a hypotenuse and the x component, which has a cosine of 60 degrees. So that, that is absolutely right. I don't have my calculator with me. So can anybody just calculate that quickly for me and let me know the answer? It's uh, 250. Thank you. Okay, so we have a magnitude of 215 in the X component. In the Y component, again, we have a vector and we have an angle of 45 degrees between the vector and the Y component. So really, we calculate the y component the same way we calculate the x component. What would that be? It'll just be the sine of 60 this time. I'm, so I'm, so I'm sorry, uh, cosine of 45. There you go. Thank you. Cosine of 45. 
And then for the z component, likewise, we calculate using the cosine of 120. Essentially, what these angles are giving us are just little right triangles, right? A right triangle with a cosine of 60, with an angle of 60, a right triangle with an angle of 45, a right triangle with an, well, this would not be a right triangle, it's an obtuse triangle with an angle of 120. But essentially, it's still a cosine, right? Um, any, any questions up to this point? Like just solving these three vectors. Okay, if there are any questions solving these three vectors, uh, can somebody just give me these two values? It will be uh, 353 newtons for f of y, and then for f of z is going to be negative uh, 250 newtons. Appreciate it. Okay, but now we're going to go to the more complicated one. Now, in, in the second drawing, we're not given angles from each axis. Instead, we're given one angle between the axis and the projection of the vector. And then we're given another angle between the projection of the vector and the actual vector. So here it becomes a little bit more complicated. So whenever I see a problem like this, I typically prefer to solve it in two steps by trying to project my triangles and then working with what I have. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna try to project uh, this triangle that I'm shading in blue. I'm gonna project that triangle first. And what I have is a right triangle with an angle of 60, where my hypotenuse is my F1. What would this vertical component be? So what would this component of the triangle be? Z. Yep, FZ. What about this component of the triangle? F of X, Y. Yeah, so this component is essentially what the book calls F prime, or what we call in the class F of X, Y, which is the projection of the force F along the X, Y axis. And one of my students on yesterday's class gave a good analogy of projections, right? He said that projection was kind of like a shadow of a vector. So if you were to uh, illuminate right from your from the top of your z axis down f of x y would be the shadow of f1 on the x y plane okay so we have a right triangle with f z f of x y and f1 and now we can just apply what we know to solve for these components so f of z you can see would be just f1 times sine of 60 and f1 is 300 newtons and then f of x, y would be f1 times cosine of 60. So 300 times cosine of 60. So can somebody give me those two values? Uh, it'll be 259.8 newtons for f of z and an f of x, y is 150 newtons. Thanks, Ray. Good. Now, Jason, I think we're getting to a point where we want to talk about what you, what you had commented on. Do you mind uh, explaining a little bit? Um, yeah, so I guess from the solution, you end up using cosine and sine. But I, mm -hmm. one video I found was like, you take the projection triangle, like the whole shadow thing, Mm -hmm. And then you take that result and do it by a sine or a cosine according mm -hmm. to how your angle shows up. Yeah, and, and you're absolutely right. And we're going to get to Jason's point in a second. So if we were to project now the red triangle, so I'm only projecting the red triangle now. What I have is a right triangle with an angle of 45. But here things get a little tricky because if you look at this triangle with an angle of 45, what does the horizontal component represent? Which axis is this? The y axis. Yeah, so this is actually f of y. And then my vertical component represents my f of x. And like Jason said, my hypotenuse would be just my projection f of xy. So here things get a little different, right? Because you're, you're always used to saying x is cosine, y is sine, but here we're doing the complete opposite, right? So if you look at this triangle and I say, and I ask you to give me the 
x component f of x, would you use cosine or sine? Sine. Sine, right? So f of x would be f of x, y, sine of 45. Now in this problem in the book, they made it a little bit easy because sine and cosine of 45 are the same, but if the angle were different, then it's really important for you to get these numbers correct. So we have f of x, y, sine of 45. So that is 150 sine of 45. Likewise with f of y, notice that y is the adjacent side. So the adjacent side uh, requires we use a cosine. So f of y would be f of x, y, cosine of 45. So again, can somebody give me that number quickly? Uh, it's 106.1 newtons. Thank you. So that's how we express these two vectors in Cartesian notation. So now, if we want to have our final answer in Cartesian form, we get that uh, F2 is equal to the X component I plus the Y component J. plus the z component k. And don't forget the units. Likewise, my f1 vector is equal to my x component i plus my y component j plus my z component k. And um, here, I want us to be a little bit careful because we're missing something, right? If we look at this projection of the triangle, in which direction is my x component facing? Is it the positive or negative direction? Negative. Okay, so that means that whatever value I get here for my x-axis, we're gonna have to turn it into a negative value. So we have negative 106i. Now, the, the problem asks us to find the resultant vector, but I think at this point, we should all be very familiarized with how to find resultant vectors. And in this case, in order to find the resultant vector, we just add our components up. I saw a couple of fluid students sign up, so we're still in the static section, but we're gonna switch to fluids at 8.30. So if you're confused, this is from our statics uh, review session. But yeah, that's essentially how we solve uh, problem 2-65. So it's a good problem, Jason. I think it's good that you brought it up because it covers a lot of what's gonna be on the exam. So are there any questions with this particular problem? All right, if there are no questions with this problem, then we have about seven minutes left before the review.